Hello. The way we understand time has a huge impact on how we look at life, our life. Uh, for example, we have been raised to think that time is linear. Okay, uh, we have we've been born, we grew up, many experience and adventure. When we are an adult, we grow old, we die. There's some sort of natural order of life. Things happen in a certain sequence. For example, another example, career. You know, you go to school, uh, you begin in a sector of activity, you're slowly but surely climbing the ladder, and then with you gain experience, you gain wealth, and eventually you retire. Once again, this normal uh, normalcy, I would say. In the Gospel according to John chapter 3, we have this Pharisee named Nicodemus that goes to and that went to visit Jesus. And Nicodemus uh, most likely is not that different from us. Uh, we can assume that uh, he studied hard in his youth, he became a Pharisee, a respected member of his community, and he worked for his people, and he reached the point, according to the text, he reached the point to become a leader of his people. He reached a level of achievement. So engaged Jesus by saying, I can see the presence of God in you. And Jesus a reply, well, you can only see the kingdom of God if you're born anew or from above, depending on the translation of the Bible you use. And without surprise, Nicodemus is not necessarily pleased by this affirmation. If this, there is this human fantasy to be young again, to return in her youth, to correct her old mistakes and all of this. Um, not sure he wants to be young again. To be like, what, a baby? To be dependent on everybody else? To waste all that he has gained, what he has achieved, his status? When we think about that, who wants that? after all that we have gained, all that we have done. Um, once again, I will use myself as an example. Yes, again, me. Uh, some would call this uh, incarnate theology, other call it totally annoying, so I hope it will not be the case. Um, well, I went to theological college. Um, I want to become a minister, so after four years I was ordained and then placed in a small rural pastoral charge when I did a few years. And then I moved to a larger, larger congregations in the city, you know, as I gaining experience and importance. Uh, but after some decision, misplaced trust and mistakes, I end up almost a few years without a congregation, without a call. And now uh, I'm serving a smaller rural congregation. And some would as, as say, some would say, well, that's not, that was not supposed to happen that way. You know, it's some kind of a failure. It's kind of going back word. It's not what, what expected. You know, that was not the progression we assume. But what if this is not a failure? What if it's just the beginning of a new cycle? What if we can free ourselves from this kind of linear understanding this trajectory that it will always be bigger, always be better, and, and instead saying it's a new cycle maybe not better maybe not worse just different and accepting that our life is made up of different cycle could be frightening because we don't know what will be next 
we don't know what to expect. It means that we have to trust in people we meet in the future in God. In a way, Nicodemus, once again, is not that different from us. Because sometimes we reach a point that we feel that we are comfortable, everything is great, uh, we don't want to rock it. But sometimes we discover that the only way forward for us is to be born anew, to start over, to put herself in jeopardy, to try to do or to be something else. The only way to reach the next level is to dare to have the courage to set aside our assumption, our privilege, everything that we've been taught somehow, and welcome what is in front of us. Because if there's one constant in this universe, it is change. It's always going to be changing. Not always for the best, not always for the worst, but it will be change. That's Nicodemus is invited to understand. That's what we are invited to understand. Once again, thank you for being there. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. And until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. And bye-bye.